Hello, welcome to another video. This is a video all about celebrating the love for independent bookshops. It is Independent Bookshop Week, which is I think partially hosted by Books Are My Bag, but basically it's just a whole week celebrating our massive love for independent bookshops. I think shopping in actual bookshops is so, so important because we don't wanna shop completely on Amazon for things and then one day all these shops around us are gonna be gone. I don't like online shopping personally, which meant that during COVID it's been kind of difficult because a lot of the time the only option we've had is to shop online. I generally just find like the results can be kind of disappointing. For example, you order something you think is gonna look really nice on you, an item of clothing, it arrives, it's a totally different fit. It doesn't look like it did in the photos. You're disappointed, you have to send it back. Similarly, you order a book, it comes with a ripped cover because you weren't in the store to pick it up. Sometimes it is unavoidable with things, like sometimes you can only get things online. And annoyingly, sometimes you can only get things via Amazon or Book Depository, which seems to be just the very rare amount of books that just aren't in bookshops anymore but there are always workarounds. Blackwell's, for example, is a good bookshop that does have quite a wide array of books that you might not necessarily think you'd be able to find anywhere else. So there are options, but generally my local bookshop is a Waterstones, so I will always shop there. I know that's not an independent bookshop and I do have some of those near me, but today's video is gonna be celebrating the independent bookshops of Bath. So as I said, my local is a Waterstones, but when I am in Bath, I love visiting these three independent bookshops. One of them is a new edition that has moved from London recently, so that's very exciting. But I wanted to take this video to tell you all about the three bookshops in Bath that I absolutely adore. I know this might be a bit of a niche video and you're probably thinking, why do we care about the bookshops in Bath if you're not able to visit Bath and things? But I thought it would be like a cozy, nice vlog style video because what I've inserted, what I'm going to be inserting is vlog footage that I filmed when I was recently in Bath. You'll have seen a little bit of this if you watched my weekly reading vlog a couple of weeks back, but I saved some of the footage to make a specific video out of it because I thought they're just such beautiful bookshops and I wanna be able to share my take on them? I don't really know what this is. It's just a tour. It's a little virtual vloggy tour of the bookshops in Bath that I just think are absolutely stunning with somewhat level of commentary by future slash present slash me right now. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you where I went. I'm gonna tell you the books I bought and we're just gonna kind of have a little wander around these independent bookshops just to really celebrate the love for indie bookshops this week and just generally going forward. You know, it's so important to shop where you can, supporting your local economy, supporting your local sellers, local shops. Obviously it's not always feasible and I do get that, I completely understand, but it's nice to just celebrate these shops and have a week dedicated to it. So let's jump right in. The first shop I visited is Toppings & Co, which I think, I'm gonna say it's joint favorite, but that's really rubbish because there's only three books, uh, three shops I'm talking to you about. Is this one my favorite? I don't know. I can't decide, <laughs> they're all so good. But Toppings is right at the top of Bath. Oh, by the way, Bath, for anyone that isn't aware, is in the south of England, is a really, really beautiful city. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite places to go. The architecture is stunning, the history is amazing. It's just a lovely place to be and these bookshops are no exception. They just are absolutely stunning as well. So, Toppings & Co. It is a really narrow, long bookshop. It just feels like it can keep going forever. But the wonderful thing about Toppings & Co is the ladders. It has ladders from floor to ceiling shelves going all the way up to the top of the shop and it just makes it feel so wholesome and so quaint. Toppings feels like a real bookshop. Obviously all of these bookshops are bookshops, but Toppings has everything stacked up very high. There's so many books everywhere you look. And obviously all bookshops have this, yes. But Toppings just does it in such a fantastic way. It's not messy, it doesn't feel overwhelming. There's still tables with like the best sellers and the signed editions and the first editions just to kind of draw your eye. But I just love it. It's so pretty, I absolutely love it when I go inside toppings, I feel so warm and happy. The staff are always really knowledgeable, they're always very accommodating. The only issue at the moment because of COVID times and social distancing and just generally anyway, it's so narrow that it is kind of difficult to be able to be in the same spot that someone else is already in without having to have some kind of awkward weaving around them. But I love how there's little alcoves that display each kind of genre slash age group and it just keeps going forever and it has so many different types of books. One of the fantastic things about this shop as well is the amount of first and special and signed editions that it has. Honestly, I was just staring at a wall of all the hardbacks for a very long time because I had three in my hand and I didn't know which ones to pick. I ended up buying two. I had to put back Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I found the really beautiful white hardback edition and I put that one back 
because I was trying to be reserved. So I bought two instead that I didn't already own because I do have the paperback of Rebecca. But oh, it's just so pretty, so pretty. So the books that I bought, I will show you. The first book I bought in Toppings & Co was Threadneedle by Carrie Thomas. You can see here, it says it's a signed first edition. And yes, I have left the cellophane on. And yes, I probably should take that off. But hang on, let's find the signature because that's always very exciting. Ooh, swirly. This is a fantasy that does slightly go into the realm of books about books. It's all focused around a magic system and being like binded to your magic. And this is happening to our main character. But basically the last line of the blurb is, is her magic a gift or a curse? But she gets to go into a shop that sells memories, a secret library where librarians feed off words and a club where revelers lose themselves in a haze of spells. So this is kind of an immersive fantasy, I believe. It's quite chunky as well. So that should be a really good one to get stuck into. But this is the first book I picked up. I think this had just come out at the time of me picking it up and I've been wanting to get a copy of this. So it was perfect that I saw it like lying there. I would say the fact that it says it's a first edition, I mean, it's obviously going to be probably a first edition because I think I literally got it like day one or two of it being out so it I slightly got hooked in by thinking oh it's really exclusive it's not quite as exclusive but still it is signed <laughs> then I also picked up a book I had never heard of before and haven't seen anyone else talking about anywhere this is the Oxford Brotherhood by Gilmero, Gilmero Martinez this is a translated fiction and this follows a mystery surrounding Lewis Carroll the author of Alice in Wonderland the blurb honestly confuses me a little bit but there is some kind of mystery with cryptic clues and puzzles and things I'm not going to try to explain it to you, nor am I going to read you the full blurb because it's really, really long. But this kind of goes alongside Alice, the woman that inspired Alice of Alice in Wonderland and Lewis Carroll, their relationship together, this mystery unfolding. It's not too long either. So actually, I think the blurb makes it look daunting, but the size of it takes away from that daunting level. But my mum saw this one on the shelves and was like, oh my God, this is your kind of thing. It's a mystery book about books yes I love this kind of thing so I picked this up and had to buy it because I'd never heard of it before I'd never seen it anywhere else and again yeah I've kept the cellophane wrapper on <laughs> and the second bookshop I went to is very exciting because this is actually moved from London so this one was based in London I visited it a few times there and it literally is like they have just picked up the shop and put it in Bath because it was a very similar layout it had the same lovely feel it feels very exclusive for Stephanie Books because I believe it's only the one shop but it's a publisher slash booksellers of out of print female writers. So the covers of all of these books are really similar. They've all got a kind of neutral tone to them. There's not really the capacity for you to judge them by their covers. And they're also all described as little plaques under each shelf. So you get like a one or two line description of the books. But I love the fact that this is supporting female writers and I love the fact that this is bringing books to light that you may have never heard of before. I will say I have actually to this day not made a purchase in Persephone books because I've never seen anything that really sparked an interest in me because I do tend to reach for more mystery slash fantasy books and I think Persephone books whilst covering quite a wide range but they tend to do more classic-esque writing, literary, that kind of thing. Not exclusively. And there are other books dotted around as well that are general, normal, normal print classics. But it's honestly such a lovely experience to go into this shop. I think that's what it is. It's like an experience to visit this shop as well as obviously an amazing shopping experience. But I, I love it in Persephone books. It's really pretty and I'm very glad there's one in Bath now. And finally, the third bookshop on my list of bookshops I visited in Bath is Mr. B's Bookish Emporium of Reading Delights. Is that the full title? A lot of people just call it Mr. B's or Mr. B's Emporium. This bookshop is so amazing. The owner of this bookshop is fantastic. They run so many events. I've seen them in London, I've seen them in Bath. Like they do so many different things. And the bookshop itself is just such an experience. They've recently redone a little bit. So the children's section amazing it's this lovely deep blue that I'm not gonna lie did partially inspire the colors in my kitchen and there's purple tones as well there's a huge tree in the middle of it and there is a whole shelf dedicated to children's graphic novels which I thought was fantastic Ava my sister she's nine oh, she's nine now she just turned nine that's weird um she really likes graphic novels and the fact that there's this whole shelf dedicated to them is amazing because I think normally you wouldn't get quite so many of those for children in a normal bookshop from what I can think of from my own local bookshop. So this was very exciting. <laughs> but other than that, there's also some really lovely art supplies, which is such a random thing to mention, but there's just such nice quality items. And 
a lot of books. There is a bath in the middle of this bookshop, which is just perfect because it's in Bath and there's a bath in the bookshop. There is also a reading room at the top floor of this bookshop, which is currently closed because of COVID, I think, but there's basically like a little curtain that you can pull over. There's a couple of comfy seats so that if you just wanted to browse the books you'd picked to decide if you want to buy them or not, there's a section to do that. They also do events. There's also like top picks that aren't necessarily like the newest fiction, but like staff have just picked out things they want to recommend, which is how I found the book that I bought in Mr. B's. But I love everything about this bookshop, but also the staff seem to know about every single book ever. I know it's always a running joke and especially, I definitely experienced this when I worked at a bookshop, but it's like the running joke that a customer will come in and be like, you know that book, it's got a red cover and it's got a circle on the front of it. Do you know the one I'm talking about? You know, you know. And then the bookseller will just be like, no, please give me more information. I swear to you, the sellers in Mr. B's would just know. Like they seem to know everything. Whenever I have bought books in there, they have read it. No matter how random the pick was, they've always read it or know of it or know of the author. And their knowledge is just amazing. They eat, sleep and breathe fiction, it feels like, and probably nonfiction too. And I just think that they're a fantastic bunch of people in there and that alone makes it worth going in. Like if you wanted to get any recommendations, if you were feeling slumpy, Mr. B's will sort you out. The book that I picked up from Mr. B's is another book about books. This is The Book of Lost Things by John Connolly. Now this is the illustrated edition, but it's not like crazy illustrated. It's just, hang on, she says, trying to find an example. There's one, there's just little, drawings throughout that really remind me of an older fairy tale book. This kind of does go down that route of fairy tale-ish. It crosses the realms of reality with the realms of fiction in the middle of a wartime. There's a young boy, hang on I'm gonna try and summarise whilst also reading the blurb, there's a young boy who feels very alone and goes to his books for company but I think he also kind of draws out a villain from these books and that invites its own issues. And there's also a war, as I said, at the same time. And with the intensity of that war means that this young boy, David, is getting more and more drawn into this fictional world instead until the two worlds start to blur together. And there's obviously a bit of a problem there. This one is intimidating for me. I don't know why. I think because the blurb, uh, I'm not entirely 100% sure what, what this book is exactly about. And it's not like the shortest book in the world. It's not got the biggest font in the world, but I do like a good book about books. So I like having this one on my collection. And also the cover is so pretty and they spoke highly of it in Mr. B's. I did also buy Ava two graphic novels. I can't remember what one of them was called, but one of them is Roller Girl, which is her favorite book of all time. And she has pulled out all the pages. <laughs> she didn't pull out, hang on, that makes it sound really bad. She hasn't pulled out the pages. She has read it so many times that the pages have all fallen out. Every single page has fallen out. She has literally read it to death. So I bought her a new copy of that and I also bought her, I can't remember what the name of it was, but it was about a little witch girl who is going through some kind of like young adventure type of thing and it's a graphic novel as well. So I bought her those two for her birthday, which was at the weekend. And yeah, that's that's everything I got in Mr. B's and it was an amazing experience. I love Mr. B's so, so much. So that is my indie bookshop tour of Bath. This, I don't, I don't know how this video is going to work yet because I'm just filming this part, whereas I've got all the vlog footage so I don't know how I've integrated it but I hope that it ended up being a video that you guys enjoyed. I know it was a little bit different again and I know that yes it was a little bit niche but hopefully you just enjoyed the nice tour anyway of the indie bookshops. Don't forget to support your indie bookshops this week and all weeks or just generally support your bookshops. It is just so important that we keep these bookshops going especially during Covid times when things are getting a lot harder but thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it please give it a thumbs up, comment down below your favourite independent bookshop if you want to recommend any and also subscribe to see more of my face on your feed. If you wanted to support me in any other way and you wanted to see more content you can sign up to my Patreon which is linked down below. This video was actually chosen by my patrons. I gave them the choice of three or four video ideas that I had upcoming and asked them what they wanted to see for this weekend and they picked this one. So thank you to my patrons for picking this. I was hoping you would pick this one because I thought it was too good not to do it this week for the fact that it's independent bookshop week. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Keep smiling and stay positive.